I haven't made a news video in like two years, but things are getting too exciting. I'm the only person out here that you can trust. First of all, the Oculus Quest 2 is amazing so far and I cannot stop playing ping pong. Now, there's been some talk about a pass-through API going around. They've already added the ability to the home screen and you can also activate it by double tapping on the side of the headset, as long as you have this experimental feature turned on. This is super useful for drinking beer in VR. The Spatial app already has access to this API and they put together this awesome demo showing it in action. However, the pass-through API has not yet been made public and Oculus has not released any details on when it will be open to developers. Even with the lack of color, this could be the ultimate AR prototyping device, so I am anxiously awaiting this feature. I'm sure you've heard that the Oculus Quest 2 has been rooted, so hopefully this stuff can become a reality sooner rather than later. Now, the main thing I've been waiting for in VR is this new workflow. I remember seeing this demo years ago and being in complete awe. The idea that you could extend your real computer screen in VR is incredible, and it's a perfect example of how physical tech is just gonna melt beautifully into the digital realm. Immersed VR is already doing this. Their app lets you bring virtual monitors into a shared workspace, and they allow you to type on your real keyboard. So the app has you press a series of keys on your keyboard, and then they match that position with a virtual keyboard in the app. This means you can use your physical computer in VR. That's insane. Next up is Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Bought it on launch day, Played it for about five minutes, haven't touched it since. Nah, I'm just kidding. It is actually really, really fun for your pets. Now, Tilt 5, the tabletop gaming AR glasses have raised 7.5 million, which is great news for the AR startup space. I think it's really cool how they've been so clear in going after a very specific use case instead of saying they're gonna go after all these crazy things and change the world. Now, on the heels of the 6D.AI acquisition, Niantic has added AR mapping tasks to Pokemon Go. Niantic seems to be going all in on building the AR cloud, and it's crazy to me that it's actually happening. I'm really excited to see what comes out of this, but so far users of the app don't seem to like pointing their camera around awkwardly in public places. Hey, don't be filming me. Oh no, no, I'm not filming. I'm, I'm scanning the environment for scale and variant feature points so that Niantic can build the AR cloud, you know, and take over the world. No, don't fucking film me. Well, okay. Okay. On a similar note, AR Kit has come out with AR Geo Anchors as of iOS 14. While this isn't really a new update, I just haven't heard many people talking about it, and I'm not sure why. Basically, they're using Apple Maps and extracting feature points from what can be seen at a street level to localize your device. So this means you can place AR content at specific locations in the real world with better than GPS accuracy. So you don't have to worry about inaccurate heading directions from your phone's compass destroying accuracy because the device is actually being localized with computer vision. This is only available in select locations, but it's still pretty amazing. Now, as far as indoor localization, we now have a few different options. Vuforia has released area targets, which allow you to scan an indoor area with a LiDAR-enabled iPad or a Matterport camera. You can then author your experience in the Unity Editor and deploy it to a device with cross-platform localization. So what this means is that we could potentially make another indoor navigation project that works cross-platform, and you guys can quit harassing me about it. The other option we have is AR Core 1.2 Cloud Anchors. They recently removed the 24 hour limit on hosting Cloud Anchors. So if I remember correctly, Cloud Anchors must be created on an Android device, but you can use AR Core to localize on both Android and iOS. I'm gonna have to do some more research on this one, but I think this may be a viable option for cross-platform indoor navigation apps. Hopefully AR Foundation will even integrate some of this stuff to make our lives even easier. Now, the last thing we need to talk about is Hart Woolery's company 2020 CV. They've partnered with Snap on their Lens Studio machine learning platform. I always thought making AR filters for Snap or Instagram was like more for artists, but this opens up new doors. Now, if you don't know about Hart Woolery, he seems to specialize in machine learning applications for mobile computer vision. So here he is tracking the 3D position and orientation of a rolled up piece of white paper. That's kind of insane. So what his partnership with Snap means is that you can now run your own custom machine learning models within Snapchat filters. So if you aren't riding his dick yet, you should be, cause Heart Rollery is crushing it. All right, that's all I got for today, guys. Um, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It really helps me out when I'm sitting up at night having an existential crisis. In the next video, we're gonna be pulling Photoshop docs out of the computer screen, so don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for that. Goodbye.